Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the channel. For today's video, we're gonna take you over and show you all the things you need to do to your brand new beta cross trainer in particular that you should be doing right away before you even take the bike out to prevent any premature failures on your bike. So here in the top of your gas tank, Beta decided to add one of these green little vent caps. Now all this little thing does is prevent fuel from pretty much flowing back out the vent tube when you tip the bike over. Now pretty much what happens is when this fails and when it, it will fail is it's gonna come out of the cap and it's gonna sink to the bottom of your tank and it's gonna plug up your fuel draw to the engine and you're gonna be out riding and all of a sudden your bike's gonna die and you're not gonna know what's going on with it and it pretty much can end up ruining your ride. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with deleting this guy. So to lead it, all we need to do is just pop it out. That's in there pretty good for now, which is good. I'm gonna pop that guy out, just like so. We just remove it like that. Now we need to make sure that we get the O-ring out of the fuel lid. Otherwise the O-ring can fall out as well and get sucked down into the petcock. So now we're looking inside the cap. All we're gonna wanna do is try and get some sort of small thing. I just got a small little tiny Allen wrench here. It'd be much easier if you got a little pick. And we're just gonna work at trying to get the rubber O-ring that's left down in there up and out just like so and there's the little rubber o-ring and that's what we want to make sure you take out when you're doing this and there's our first thing done let's go ahead let's hop over to the next thing now we've got our oil drain tube here that comes off the power valve spacer and what happens is from factory you got a zip tie here that goes around it and when you look at the zip tie you can see that the line is actually being just completely crushed and pretty much what happens is if the fluid gets backed up and you're unable to release the pressure uh, you can cause some engine damage so we need to make sure that this line is not being crushed like this from this stock zip tie. So we're gonna have, we're gonna cut this zip tie and we're gonna put a zip tie on it as well, but we're gonna make sure that it's not so tight that it's crushing it as it is right now. As you can see, that thing is just totally smushed and there's no way the fluid's gonna get through that because it is just totally crimped off. Just like so. Now that line that we just cut that first zip tie off, if we look really closely down in here, you can see one more zip tie and that one goes and runs underneath the skid plate. So we're gonna start by pulling off the skid plate so we can inspect this bottom zip tie to make sure that it's not crushing the tube down there either. All right, now with a few couple bolts, we just had one eight mil up at the front of it and we had one eight mil here in the back. We've got the skid plate removed, set that aside, it's junk anyways. And then we can get in close here. And now we're further able to inspect this tube with this bottom zip tie and we're gonna secure it. We're not gonna crush it. We wanna make sure that tube is not being crushed. All right, now the next thing we wanna do is we need to move remove our headlight here. So I cut a couple pull tabs on each side of the forks. Now that we've got access to the back of the headlight in here, after a little bit of finagling, we're gonna need to go and disconnect all of these connectors. The, one of the things with these betas is they're kind of known for having not the best electrical stuff. And they don't exactly use the best waterproofing in their electrical connection. So we're gonna make them waterproof by using some of this. Now, if you guys already watched the last video on the oil injection stuff, you've already seen we've used these two products. So first we're gonna unplug them. Then we're gonna hit them with this ACF 50, link down in the description for both these products if you are looking for them. And then we're gonna follow up with some dielectric grease. And this is gonna help make sure that we waterproof our connections. Now we're going to go over the whole bike front to back and hit up every single connection on the bike with both of these. Let's go ahead and let's jump into it. So all we're going to do is go one plug at a time. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to just lightly spray all these connections. And we're going to put some dielectric grease in all these plugs. All right, so now we've gone and we've touched every single plug up here. We're gonna go over and let's move to the next location. So next we're gonna go over, we're gonna remove our gas tank, which is gonna give us access to our next, next batch of electrical connectors that we're gonna go over. So now you can see we've got our next main harness here. So we're just gonna undo some of the clips we got and one zip tie we're gonna snip and then we'll go through and do all the electrical connections here around the engine bay. Now we're gonna move down to our little radiator ones here for our temperatures. I'm assuming this is for our fan sensor. So now we're gonna move over to our radiator. We got a plug here. If you guys watched the last video, we showed you about the oil injection stuff. Those are already been taken care of as well as our ECU that's been done in the last video. Now all that's left is we got these sets of plugs up here. This is your old, uh, this is for your turn signals in the rear if you're gonna use that, which we're gonna wait on till we get the, uh, till we get that to plug in. We got this connection here to do and our main fuse block. I believe that's our main fuse block here to do and that should be all our connections done. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to finish it up like this. So now that we've gone over and waterproofed every single one of our connections, the next thing you want to check, you're going to want to check is your muffler joint. Now if you're looking at the pipe, you come up, you follow it and there's your muffler joint. Now you can see 
that they've already gone over and placed zip ties on mine from the factory. Now, I'm pretty sure normally this doesn't come with this coupler. I might be wrong, it might come with the coupler, but uh, I know a lot of guys are having issues where a lot of spooge is coming out of there and just making a whole mess all over the bike. Now, luckily that's already been done for me, so we can check that off the list. Now, because the bike is brand new, it's never even seen dirt yet and everything's still sparkly clean, this is about the best time to do what we're about to do next. And we got some of this 3M PPF paint protection film here and we're going to go over and we're going to wrap this entire frame in this clear ppf bra and this is going to just going to help protect the frame from any scratches um, and just to try and make it keep looking nice and clean and at the end of the day if you go to sell this you can just peel this stuff off and the frame's going to look sparkly shiny clean all right and just like that we've got this whole side of the frame you can see the ppf starts right here and it runs all the way up the frame all the way up to the top and ends see this is the best part of the ppf is you can barely even tell where it is it ends right there. So yeah, now we've got this whole side of the frame all PPF'd. That's all for protected, so it won't get any micro scratching, just to keep it in best condition it could possibly stand. So I'm gonna show you guys how I did it over on this side, because we have yet to PPF it. So the very first step we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut this zip tie and remove this frame guard out so we can have the PPF go down in behind it so you can't see the line, and it just looks cleaner that way. I can pull this whole guard off. All right, so if we have it come down to the edge here and wrap around and then we'll go up to say like there so we got our mark we're just going to cut this now we don't necessarily need this much width it's just a bit too big so we're going to go and do about a thumb from your first joint down it'll be linked down in the description if you're looking to get some ppf we're just going to go ahead and we're going to cut a bit of this stuff away because we just don't need it so we're just going to run down the whole length of this stuff now a little trick i like when i'm using any type of vinyl or i'm wrapping anything is I like to come to the corners and I like to round them off. As generally speaking, it's the square hard edge corners is what ends up peeling up first. So if we just come like this and we just round off the corners like so, it's gonna end up sticking just a whole lot better. Just like that, so now it's not a square edge, we got a nice round edge here. This is kind of the tricky part. And get this lined up to the edge of where we want it up here. And then I like to just run my finger up the center as we start to peel the backing backwards. I'm just gonna rip off this excess paper. Got a bit of a holder here. And just make sure you're patient with this stuff. This can be the, the difficult part, time consuming doing this, but it's gonna keep your bike looking real fresh. I'm just grabbing the very top edge that's not gonna get seen anyways. And we're just gonna make sure that the outside looks nice and smooth. And we're not using any heat, no soapy water, just some good quality 3M PPF. So when we've got to this stage, we're gonna need we're gonna need a couple relief cuts here, and where it's crinkling up here, we're gonna need a couple more relief cuts. So make sure you got a sharp knife for this. All right, and just like that, we've got our PPF all along this side of the frame. We got it all down that side of the frame. And with that, we've got the main biggest pieces that'll be hitting the ground nice and protected, so those are covered up. All right, so all that is now done. We've got our PPF on the frame. That's all back together. The last thing we need to do is get this throttle cable correctly set up. So right now, if we follow where it runs, it goes down here and it's on the wrong side of the clutch cable. So you want this to actually come in behind the clutch and we're aiming for this little tiny hole right down in there. So from factory, the throttle cable's in the cor uh, incorrect position, so let's go ahead and fix that. So first we gotta remove our headlight, and now we can get access to running the throttle cable correctly. So we need to go ahead, we need to loosen off these. So when we're looking at the throttle, we need to come to the very bottom. If we look up inside there, we've got two eight millimeter bolts up in there, so we're gonna loosen those guys and let's pull the throttle off and let's try and get this rerouted. This is gonna be really fun. All right, so now we got those loose. Should be able to pull the throttle right up and off. Gonna turn this over this way, give it some slack. So here we got the throttle cable here, underneath the clutch cable. This guy, we need to go underneath the brake master. There we go. You get this underneath these plugs here, like so. Okay, and then we're gonna get our throttle cable. It's gonna come up in behind these guys. And pull these up out of this clip. Like so, and like so. Okay, and now the throttle tube can be up here and it's not gonna be uh, being pulled on. Boom, and now we got our throttle cable correctly routed in behind the shroud, in behind the brake and master lever. Now we can go over and we can tighten it up on the handlebar over here. We can just tighten that back up. You didn't have to take the bolts out. All you gotta do is just loosen them so that it's loose. So now you can see from looking from the back of the bike, it runs down here and in behind 
down in the corner here. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video and that you've learned something about your beta. If you have, make sure you go down below, click that like button, click subscribe for more. We got a whole bunch more videos coming in. If you got any questions, leave them down below in the comment section. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.